All right, one more chapter before I have to get ready for work. <sighs> chapter 5 We're drunkenly relaxed, wandering through the halls of the school-slash-brewery, st uh, staring at all the murals of scary dancing children with the faces of 80-year-olds. What?! I go to the front desk and get us a room. We're going to stay here tonight, I tell Stacy. She sways at me, leaning her head back with her eyes closed and a dumb smile on her face. I get a picture of Hammerhead from the movie theatre, which used to be the school's auditorium, and take my giant drunken girlfriend into the room. <laughs> I continue drinking, fidgeting with my hand wound that has finally stopped bleeding and is beginning to itch, sitting in a chair next to the chalkboard. The room was once a classroom. They left the chalkboards on the walls. Employees have drawn flowers on the board in red and yellow chalk, with the words, Welcome to Kennedy School, written in girly cursive. Stacy sits on the edge of the bed next to me and tries some of my beer, then spits it into the glass. Yuck, she says. I wanted the raspberry beer. You didn't say you wanted anything, I tell her. I want the raspberry. You want me to get you some? She nods her head sloppily against her shoulder. Okay, I'll get another pitcher. This fucking paragraph break there. Why? Like, I decide just to get her a 22-ounce bottle of ruby at the front desk rather than a pitcher. The school has gotten pretty quiet. The restaurant is closed. It's just a few minutes before beer o'clock. Looking at the old pictures on the walls of the school when it first opened decades ago, little monochrome children kneeling in the dirt, holding their school projects. A few of those same school projects are a few feet away, behind glass, crudely painted birdhouses. I wonder about all of those kids. Most of them must be dead now. They're birdhouses like ghosts they left behind. I get back to the room. Steve, Stacy calls out as I open the door. I turn the corner. Her pants are off and she's fuck's sake. The, her pants are off and she's probing her vagina with her arm, almost all the way up to her elbow. What are you doing? I ask. She laughs at me. Look, she says, pulling her vaginal lips open. They are stretchy like rubber. Then she laughs, hysterically. I chuckle too, in a nervous kind of way. I did... Uh, I didn't know it could do that before. She lets the lips go and they slap back into place. Her head wobbles at me. She's way too drunk. I hide her beer behind the bed. I take her hands away from her vagina and try to put her pants back on. No, she says, kick kicking her pants away. Stacy! She laughs at me. I keep trying to put her pants back on, but she just kicks and laughs. Then she sits up and looks at me. I want you to look inside, she says. I snicker like it was a joke. I can't see for myself, she says. I want you to tell me what it looks like in there, if you can see ghosts. I look up her cute br I look up at her cute brown eyes and can't tell her no. She leans back on the bed and stretches out her vagina lips again. The hole is big enough to fit a football through. I bend down and look inside. See anything? she asks. No, I say. Just a fleshy cavity. Stacy spreads her lips out further. I help her, pushing the labia apart, peering in. The hole might be wide at the opening, but it shrinks to the size of a pea only inches within. I dig my hand inside, but the hand but my hands are dry and abrasive. Ow, she says. She builds spit in her mouth and then rubs it inside of her as a quick lubricant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> Fuck you, Doc. Uh, I slide my hands in, both of them, and spread the flesh apart as wide as I can. It stretches to about basketball width. I look within. There's a pin of light deep inside of her. Maybe a reflection of the lamp against a pool of moisture? No, it's some kind of light. What do you think it is? I ask. Maybe it's the ghost, she says. No, I don't think so. It's just some kind of light. Stacy lets go of her labia and retrieves the beer that I had hidden from her. She cracks it open against the edge of the table and takes a chug. I drink a pint from my pitcher. We sip our drinks in silence for a while. The more Stacy drinks, the more sober she seems to become. The more I drink, the more retarded I become. <laughs> I want you to go in there, Stacy tells me, calmer than she has been all night. I don't know what she means at first, my mind lost in a game of solitaire. I can't just forget about this and get on with the rest of my life, 
she says. I've got to find out what's going on in there. What do you want me to do about it? That skeleton thing was almost bigger than you, she says. If it could fit through, then you can fit. What? I think my vagina is a gateway of some kind. That light you saw must be the light at the end of the tunnel, the entrance to another world. I'm not going in there. I laugh at her. Steve, she says, holding my knee. You have to. I can't possibly figure out what's going on without your help. I chug the last of my beer, snickering. There's no way I'm agreeing to that. If you love me, she says, you'll do it. She's completely serious. She's looking at me like this. She's looking at me like this is the ultimate test of our love. If I don't do it, she will leave me for somebody who will. My voice is shaky. I can't. Please, she says, angry faced at me, gripping my knee as if to hurt me. I stand up and go to the bathroom. She follows. All you have to do is crawl to the end of the tunnel and look out, she says to me while I'm urinating. Then come right back and tell me what you see. Nothing will happen to you, I promise. Just as far as the light, I ask. Yes, she nearly screams the reply at me. I finish pissing and flush the toilet. I'll give it a try, I tell her. For you. She closes her eyes and nods her head at me. How much is left of this chapter, for love of fuck? I need to get ready for work. <sighs> Stacy tries taking off my shirt. What are you doing? I ask. You'll go in easier without your clothes on. I shake my head at her, but allow her to remove my clothes. Oh, fuck. Hello? Uh, no. Uh, no. Sorry. N no, I could have, I could have after work, but I, I can't now. Well, I could have brought something back, but it won't be until I come back. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, ground. Okay, bye, bye. Bye bye. No edits. There you go, you fucking arsehole. There. You're a conversation about what to have for dinner. Where am I? Oh, God. Right. You'll go in easier without your clothes on. I shake my head at her, but allow her to remove my clothes. For some reason, she takes off all her clothes too. This isn't going to work, I say. This thing was supernatural. I'm not. We'll make it work, she says. What if I suffocate? <laughs> what, if, what if you stop being stretchy once I'm in there? <laughs> Shh, she says, leading me to the bed. It's going to work, you'll see. She climbs onto the bed and lies on her back, staring at me with her cold dark eyes. She spreads her legs like she wants me to fuck her. Then she masturbates. Do you think this is hot or something? I ask. She bites her lip. I need to moisten up. I laugh out loud. I'm so drunk that I actually believe this is going to happen. Then she pulls her lips apart as wide as she can, about 14 inches. Her hips pop out of joint like the jaws of a snake opening up for its prey. Come on, she says. She's so wet that she can't hold on to the sides very well. They keep slipping out of her fingers. I crawl onto the bed in front of her and kiss her. She tongues my cheek sloppily. I make a fin with my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore, you fucking... Yeah, fuck you, Darth, so much. I'm <laughs> I make a fin with my hand and slide that in first, then my other hand, and separate her opening as wide as I can. I look up at her. She doesn't say anything, just licks her trembling lips. I notice that I'm also trembling, my hands shaking like the first time I ever had sex. If I get claustrophobic, I'm coming back out. <laughs> I tell her. She pushes my face down onto her crotch, like she does when she wants oral sex. I push my arms up through the elbows, up to, to the elbows. I can see them moving inside of her belly. Then I put the top of my head into the opening and push. Stacy cries... Stacy cries out and begins masturbating again. I can feel her fingers against the back of my head. I don't know if it turns her on or if my scratchy hair is hurting her and she needs more lubrication. I push again. She cries out again. It's impossible. I'm stuck. I shove again, but don't budge an inch. I pull out. What? Stacy says. It's not working, I say. Yes, it will, she says. 
There's no way, I tell her. It's going to happen whether you like it or not. She's not giving up for anything. She takes scissors out of her purse. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, fuck me, where's this going? She takes scissors out of her purse, the one she uses... The one she uses as a toenail clipper and cuts off all my hair. Okay. The dull blades mixed with her furious movements make it a painful fucking experience, even with all the alcohol in my system. Then she shaves it down smooth with a disposable pink razor. I think I'm beginning to feel hungover. She greases up my entire body with some girly skin stuff, lotion or oil or something. It mostly absorbs into my skin, but I do feel sufficiently lubed. This time it's going to work, she says to me, kissing my bald head. She lubes up her vagina as well. Push as hard as you can this time, she says. Plunge into me. Don't worry, it won't hurt. I don't care about it hurting. I'm more worried about suffocating. Or or what is waiting for me within. At least there haven't been any noises coming out of there. She positions us on the bed and shoves my head into her crotch again. This time she pushes into me as I push into her. Arms first. They slide in very easily. The top of my head. Fuck. Was that the front door? my place. The top of my head also goes in with ease. It's, it makes her still cry out, like makes her masturbate, but I doubt I'll get much further than this. I push my push a little, move an inch, push again, move an inch. My nose is practically in her asshole now. I hesitate to go any farther. There's no way I can breathe in there. The corpse that came out of her was undead. It didn't need to breathe. Stacy can tell I'm not trying anymore. I can sense her anger building. She smacks at my arms in her belly in a come on, come on kind of way. I try to pull out again, but Stacy lunges at me. She stands up and squats over me, dropping all of her weight down. Oh my god. Dropping all of her weight down on top of me, and I find myself sliding up into her, abyssal ca uh, her abysmal cavity until I'm up to my chest, her vaginal lips closing tight around my armpits. She squats down on me again, harder, until I'm up to it, up to, up, uh, until I'm in it up to my belly. Holy crap, this is really happening. I'm really going all the way inside of her. My face pressed against wet flesh, my eyes closed. I can breathe, but just barely. My face is hot with my breath. Stacy screams, screams out and plops onto her back again, masturbating furiously against my lower spine. I position my head face forward and try to open my eyes, but the vaginal juices burn them. I can hear Stacy's muffled whines on the other side of the flesh. I can feel her grabbing her breasts again against the back of my shoulders. I can feel her holding me inside of her belly as a way to comfort me one last time before my voyage. I push off with my feet. It seems looser the farther in I go. After a few inches, I feel Stacy's hand grab my ass and shove me from behind. I straighten out as my buttocks go through, now lying inside of her. She grabs my legs and jostles them in, using my ankles as handles. I squirm forward. The next thing I know, her lips close up around my wriggling toes. Okay. 